Anyone else? Do we want to do it? A vote on whether is that the right thing to do? Whether this is it an area where we want we want to give it? We have to give direction. Direction. One or the other. Um, are we ready to do that, or do we want comments first? I have one more comment about parking fee. Um, I think if we didn't have the parking fee, Jeff, am I correct in thinking that the kids wouldn't be attached to their cars? So those who may drive fast, those who may um, be spotted on campus, um, moving quickly around the campus would not be attached to a car, um, not have it, to me, it's a safety check. You mean be able to be identified? Yes. Is that, oh, is that? Yeah. Um, you know, um, the car is attached to the child, so therefore, let a backpack. That's another piece I like about the parking fees, but I don't know if that's trackable. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that the parking fees is add, honestly, anything to that. Um, it saves us a step in identifying the kids, but in the past, if we have a student who a community member reports is speeding on, or we notice is speeding on, or being careless, or parents. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. On campus, uh, we will we have before this year. We always called the police mm -hmm. um, and just said, "Here's a license plate. Can you give us the information about who this vehicle is registered to?" Okay. So, and that's pretty easy to do. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I didn't succeed in biting my tongue enough because this went on too long, but I, I agree with Mary um, and I understand Kathy's concerns. I've always been one who believes that public school system should be paid for by the public and not fees on children and parents. However, to me, maybe it's because I never owned a car growing up, that the mere fact that you can own a car, you can afford to own a car, and, you par and you, we provide a parking spot which the maintenance of which we cover in our public budget I think it is appropriate to charge some money it's eight thousand is not going to make or break this budget one way or the other I thought it was simply a political and equitable solution for people to play it's not like sports it's not like band it's not like this it's not essential to drive your car um, but it's a privilege and if we have to pay for you to be able to park there by maintenance then on a privilege in the fact that you can actually afford to own a car um, I personally think you should pay something for it. Uh, I am concerned about the slippery slope that Kathy is. I don't think it starts at the parking fee. That's my view. Okay. <coughs> Let's... Just uh, one <coughs> quick thing too. I just agree with both your comments and, and having gone to school here and seeing the difference in size of that parking lot when we were in school here, it's probably tripled um, inside, maybe four times as big as it used to be when we were here. And that, I, you know, that, that, that was a long time ago, like 25, 30 years ago. However, I just see those lots as, I know it's public property, but it's a piece of real estate too. I mean, and the fact that we've had to build a, uh, an intersection light to accommodate traffic and mainly kids with cars going back and forth and or parents dropping off. I just don't see it's a big, um, it, it's not much to ask for. It's not a huge chunk of money. Um, I, I think it's a privilege and we should continue you know, having these fees. This. Okay, um, so can I see a show of hands, I guess of, pe of board members who would be interested in um, asking the superintendent to change his recommendation around parking fees. In other words, you would be raising your hand if you were opposing the fees. Okay. Well, um, the only question I have, are, are we, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're opposing, I know there's a why we pick parking fees to have a vote on out of thousands of budget line items. There's are we going to go through each line item and vote on or I thought we were just going to... No, I'm what, we're doing, I'm we're about <clears throat> no what, what we're doing right now is we're going, we're circling back to 
various areas of the budget that were that were we addressed previously, but we had some we had specific concerns about or or uncertainty about, um, and this was this was one of one of those. Um, so we we won't be visiting every line item. Or else you would have to bring your pajamas. No, I, I, I was curious <laughs> on the process. <laughs> My concern was, you know, you know we, we get tentative agreement, and it doesn't mean, you know, other, is there someone that doesn't agree with the parking fees? It doesn't necessarily mean you agree with them. You may just say, I defer to, you know, the overall budget in the direction. So I just wanted to clarify yes. the process. Yes, I think that's a fair way to make that decision, absolutely. Um, so, I have in my notes other areas where board members um, had addressed concerns, but I'm not going to list those. I'll just ask people to raise those concerns if they have them. David. I did have a concern about potential underfunding of some certain extracurricular activities. I did talk to Ken. I don't know if I talked to Jeff, but I don't think I did. But I became comfortable that that's not a major issue, so we can take that off the table. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other concerns? Okay. Um, I do a, and I've talked to Ken and are comfortable with the work that, um, with the conversations with Ken with, around the reading recovery. Um, uh, the reading program we have and that the fee of reading recovery and the, the large number it is. But I know that the literacy team is doing work with Ken and um, they have a good handle on it and will um, do the best for the school. We talk about it in depth then. Um, so I'll give that to you, but know that I'm, I am concerned about that very large number for the first grade program. Could I ask for some additional, obviously you had a conversation, but the rest of us weren't in on that. And, I, and I, um, I've had concerns about the, reading, the cost of the reading recovery program and the effectiveness of it for some years. Could you maybe um, expound upon what she's talking about? Yeah, um, Kate serves on the uh, literacy task force. And so she gets to see, amongst other things, the uh, tremendous work going on, K through five with literacy. There are two consultants that we've hired to work with our K through five teachers that have really captured the, the enthusiasm and the energy of K through five teachers. So, you know, it's, it's the type of professional development work that we'd like to replicate five through eight, six through eight in high school, um, because teachers are learning some things that they can apply, and that's, that's the best kind of professional development. So reading recovery is just part of that discussion. Reading recovery is probably um, the Cadillac of interventions, um, and if it's producing Cadillac-like results, then we'll want to continue it. But it does jump off the page as a, as a new person, um, the amount of money <coughs> that we're devoting to that program. So what I've begun to do is just meet with the individual reading recovery teachers to learn more about it. And also um, Tom and his staff are putting together the data. Because if the data shows that we're getting the kind of return on investment, then it would be crazy to mess around with it, in my view. But on the other hand, if we're not getting the kind of return on investment, then we ought to look at perhaps using that methodology, but with a different type of um, teacher-kid ratio. Right now, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So in order for me to um, continue recommending that program, I'd have to be comfortable that we're getting that sort of result. And where are you in that process? 
Um, I've been here two and a half months, so... <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have it completely down. <laughs> what I don't want it to be is like, you know, you hired Murphy as an interim and he's coming on an agenda to kill reading recovery. It's, it's not that. It's, it's just an approach that there's got to be data that supports anything. And if the data doesn't support it, then we take, you know, my opinion of reading recovery off the table and whoever is a big supporter of it, we just look at the data. Is this the best return on investment that we can make in order to? So uh, I think within another month, six weeks, I'll have a, a better handle on whether we're getting the return on it than we are. We probably are. I can't imagine that it hasn't been looked at before, but I would just like to, to learn more about it. Thanks. Will this be something that the board will be updated on since it's such a large line item in the budget? Um, and so you're tracking data, are, are you, I'm assuming you're tracking data through grade 12 for kids who have had reading recovery one-on-one -on -one help? Is yeah, we'd like right? to look at all of that stuff. You know? yeah. Is that the plan, Tom? Yeah, it would just be an update, really, to, to make it more public. It's, okay. uh, and it's slightly easier now because a lot of it's electronic. Okay, so that might be something we can add into a business meeting at some point, Ken? I do, I do. I, I, I think, um, you know, even if we were to staff it differently, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's an area where I'd recommend any savings. I can think of some areas where we need additional literacy help. I mean, at the middle school, and I haven't had a lot of time to discuss this with Steve, and I wouldn't want it imposed on them, but the other thing that sticks out as sort of a new person is, there's not a literacy lead teacher at the middle school. Um, um, I think there should be. But again, that isn't something I'd want to impose on the staff. I would want you know, them to feel ownership of it uh, because it's the worst thing you can do is impose a position onto a school because it creates a, uh, some, some problems you don't need. So. But that, that does. As much as you know, I look at what we're doing K-4, when I'm looking at 5.8 and, and not seeing some resources there that I think we should have. Okay. Any other questions on reading recovery? Okay. Are there other issues that board members wanted to address around areas of the budget that we could circle back to. I just had a question. When, uh, at some point, we'll approve the budget prior to, uh, it sounds like, the completion of the negotiations with the teachers. Or just help me understand the timing. Um, so if we approve it, we feel good, you know, just so we understand, are we approving something that is contingent upon revision based on completion of that process? That's a good question, Michael. I mean, we're going to meet on the 30th to put the uh, final touches on it. So the teachers will ratify first, and then it comes to the school board for ratification. So it should happen um, sometime in April. I'm not anticipating anything unusual happening. I mean, there's a tentative agreement, and I don't think that's going to become um, it's not going to unravel in our last meeting, is what I'm trying to say. Anything else? Okay. I, I wanted to circle back to energy. Um, really, at your recommendation, that was something that you suggested we might take another look at. We're, we're Budget's based on locking in at three dollars a gallon mm -hmm. for that's the heating oil price. Yes. Okay. Um, but right now we would be that we wouldn't be able to do that. We're hoping that sometime between now and July first that we'll be able to lock in at that that rate or lower. Um, yes. If we locked in right now, what what would the what would we be locking in at? Three thirty. Changes almost every day. Yeah, I, I, it's it is varied. In, uh, last Friday was three forty five and three forty eight. Um, the prior was three nineteen. 
Uh, it's going up and down. I, I would not advise at all looking at locking in right now. Um, we should be waiting till June, July period, and I think you'll see.